Before we quit working with the live fly and the ATEM switches, I would like to introduce a number of system actions. System actions are some that doesn't depend on installed device cores. So if you look at the actions, um, the device cores we have installed for the uh, LiveFly right now, it's only one, and that's for the ATEM switcher. But all the time, if you scroll to the bottom, you have a number of system actions. During this series, we have been looking at very important stuff like shift level states, memories, um, uh, also local color, graphic, and labels transforming uh, four-wave behaviors and forcing HVC types, but there are a number of them which we haven't talked much about, and many of them are quite easy to work with. So, um, the, the, the things that I, I have in mind is stuff like panel sleep, we want to look at how we can adjust brightness of the panel, we want to see uh, how we can, um, something called tying uh, hardware components to other components, that's also an interesting thing. So, um, we also have an action to uh, make the whole panel inactive if you want to prevent people from accidentally touching or changing anything. We have something called flags that can be useful, in particular moving like binary states around. System info, did it connect correctly to everything? And uh, then finally, um, a way that you can sort of build macros in the system with a little waiting time. That's also possible. So for instance, let's say that we wanted to have an action where we want to build in waiting time. So it could be something like cut. So after cutting, we wanted to do something different. Um, let's say, or maybe actually, well, what should it do? Ah, it could also be a button that would select a media first and then change to the media player. That, that, that would be interesting. So uh, first of all, to do that, we want to connect to the other ATEM switcher we have over here. And then for media player, Number one, uh, we might want to do something like this. We already put in a different label saying media, so that could have now been like logo, right? And um, Or maybe it should be for the downstream key up here, or the upstream key. Up. Anyway, let's, let's get rolling. Let's put in an action that will select a media still, media still number four. And so we basically say media still number four, uh, select that. Then I want you to wait for one tenth of a second and then, or not how many tenths of a second, 10 tenths of a second, that's like one second, right? So select media number four in this, ah, sorry, select media four for media player one, wait for a second. Then select media player one for preview and you're ready to cut. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. And I'm saving this. I do need to reboot the controller because we need to connect to this one. We are currently connected to a 2ME switcher, which is why I need to reboot. And we should be able to see this um, happening now. Now, what should now happen when I press this one is that it should go to this. It should select this still for media player one and then it should enable this one on preview. Currently, we have input six on preview. So let's try it. I press, this still was selected, and now it's also on preview, exactly as we wanted. And there was like a second delay in between. So that was good. That was uh, showing how we can uh, create delays a little bit. Now let's try something else. I go back to uh, the uh, local configuration. And I think, let me change this selector up here to be system info. So um, we just remove this action and then we go and select system info, save. So what do we see from system info? It says system info, okay connection. So it basically confirms that everything is fine. Otherwise it will tell us if there was a problem with any of the device cores. We also have flags. So flags is, uh, it's only possible, I think, to kind of show it in a, in a little strange way here. But um, we haven't been looking much at these LED meters sitting here. I now addressed media um, meter number one, and I want to assign that to a flag. A flag is a bit in the system. I am uh, going to select flag number four. Uh, so that's the feedback flag I'm, I'm thinking about here. And um, I'm going to save this. So uh, now this one will reflect the state of flag number four. If I go to the button U2, which is 
seems to be my favorite choice of having fun with flags. I'm I'm now uh, going to affect flag number four by setting it or hold down. So um, let me just make it hold down. So it means that as I'm now saving, you'll see uh, flag number four is currently on. If I turn it off, or oh, sorry, it's not currently on because this is really showing not the status of the flag, but it's showing me what happens when I press the button. But you can see as I am turning flag number four on, it is now flipping this one over here. So where this makes a lot of sense is when you use flags to, for instance, trigger GPI outputs on a controller. We use it on the RCP where you have a GPI output and basically there's a button on the panel. When you press that button, it is changing flag number whatever, one or two or zero. And then that flag is assigned to the GPI output on the back side of the panel so that you can route that into your infrastructure to make a change of a route for the monitor in front of the CCU operator. So uh, we um, can also do something else, which is uh, neat, namely letting one action follow another one. So uh, let's look at the fader here. So for the fader on the panel, I want to assign that to the LED bar on the side here. So I have two options. I, let me just bring these two up. Um, I can either select exactly the same action for the LED bar, or I could tell the LED bar to basically mimic the fader. Uh, both would be easy here, but as I'm now saving, you can see that the LED bar is actually working along with the fader. But I could also have done something else. I could have said, let this LED bar be tied to hardware component 25. So I need to look at the number there and then select 25. And so th this means that in a more general sense, I am now following that fader. And whatever action I put down here is what will be reflected on the LED bar. Example, so as I'm now doing this, we should see the same behavior on the LED bar, but what if the fader was instead controlling master volume? So let's just look at the fader separately here and then assume that we are adjusting audio volume or do we have something called master volume? Is it audio volume? I need to select master then. Oh, well, just input number one. That's, that's totally fine for what we're doing. Okay, so save. So what you'll see now is that if we go to the audio tab, my fader is adjusting audio volume on um, uh, uh, camera number one in the ATEM switcher and the LED bar is following along without any extra programming. I just tied the LED bar to the fader in the system and that's all I needed to do to make that work. So um, we also have, let me see, inactive panel. Yes, so again, I'll go to you to clear out this and then find the one called inactive panel. This is a feature you find used on the RCPs, uh, a use case, a context where it's quite often, um, um, yeah, so you see now it's inactive, it's active, so it's actually showing the state. Again, if you remember the video we had about labels, the solid bar for the title means that what you see in the display is not a label telling you what the button does, it is the state of the function. So currently the panel is active, I can do changes as I press this one, I cannot do any changes anymore. So man, no matter what I do, that nothing is happening. So it's like a protection mechanism. I can now enable it again and now I'm doing stuff. All great, that's easy. Brightness, that's another thing we want to control. So uh, brightness could be assigned to an encoder. So let's put brightness on an encoder and um, Oh, we can put it on buttons as well. That's interesting. Let's try that. Now, uh, we put it on an encoder, but let's let's see what happens if we put brightness on <laughs> on buttons. So again, button number two, let's put brightness on that guy. Panel brightness, let's set brightness to five. Okay, so we save and we'll now be looking at the panel. So um, currently brightness is eight. I can now turn down brightness, so you'll definitely see that the panel becomes less bright, and now it's actually completely turned off, but I'm now turning on the brightness of the panel again. I know it's a little bit um, difficult to see the different brightness levels on the video, but I can assure you if you're sitting in a dark master control room, these knobs might be too bright for your, your uh, sensitive eyes, and you want to have panel brightness on the controller. So um, with the encoder, I've now turned it off completely. So pressing panel brightness on this button will bring it to level five instantly. Since you may not want to use an encoder for panel brightness, something as rudimentary as panel brightness, why not assign it to a four-way button? 
So we can turn U2 into a four-way button. Now I'm just, you know, playing with the things that you already learned in the previous videos, and that's always so much fun, so I just can't help myself. But let me go to um, force H3C type. So I'm basically saying now that I want this component, I need to bring that to the top. So I'm now forcing my U2 four-way button to become like an encoder. So when I press the sides, I'm adjusting values up and down, and then uh, the next action is panel brightness. Okay, admit it, the value 5 doesn't really make a whole lot of sense now, because value 5 was only relevant when I had it as a button press, So because now it's going to cycle through. So I'm saving, and you'll see that as I'm now pressing the sides of this button, I am adjusting the panel brightness up and down. What better use of a four-way button could you wish for? That's really a nice use case for that. And then finally, we get to panel sleep. Yes, our panels can sleep, and you can set default values for panel sleep up here. So um, what you do is you get to uh, panel sleep action right there. You can see the default is that it's probably going to sleep in four hours or so. This is what I think. Uh, we can now do a test with 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, it's going to do something. You have a few options for how it's going to um, uh, appear to you and uh, how it's also um, uh, acting. Uh, <laughs> let's just see what it's doing right now. So uh, save. And if I don't touch the panel, then we should see the panel go into sleep mode in... Um, let me see if it actually happens in 10 seconds. Or maybe it's needing to reboot. I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure we need to reboot it, actually, to, uh, to see this happening. So um, let's do that. Let's save and reboot the panel. So by assigning it to the controller element on the panel, it becomes like a default setting. Although it's an action you apply, for the system actions in the system, they will all receive a trigger when the panel is booted just a single time, which is the reason why the web config action will actually enable web config, and it's also the reason why, in this case, it will set up the panel brightness, or uh, sorry, the panel sleep parameters when it was booted. And there you go, it's now in sleep mode. You can see the fireworks is referring to the fact that the panel is like, you know, making nice color animations, and it's also doing something here. It's saying, I'm sleeping, wake up by key press. So let's now look at the panel configuration again and see if we can play a little bit with this. So um, wake up on key press, that kind of makes sense. The, the, the value counting animals is one of my jokes. So if you enable that one, and why not try it yourself, then the panel will be counting sheep and goats. Then if you look at the fireworks, I think you know what I mean now by seeing these color animations. If you choose uh, buttons off, it means that it's just going to um, turn off the panel. You want sleep time on your panels to preserve the OLED displays if your panel is on 24-7 and most likely not used 24-7. You may experience burn-in in the OLED displays if they are continuously turned on with the exact same content all the time. This is why we integrated a screensaver in your panels so that they'll last for much longer. And I'm talking about burn-in is like after years of, you know, use. But we have seen it on stuff that has been turned on for a long time that there's some kind of burn-in to the displays, which obviously is something you want to avoid. And you can easily do that by uh, using the, the panel sleep time. So, guys, this was the system actions kind of concluding our work with the LifeLi panel and how you can uh, use that with atom switches and everything else. Um, I hope to see you in the next videos where we'll address even more advanced stuff in the Skahoy universe. Thanks for following along this far.